Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Liddy here. Mark's like, oh my God, his energy just got crazy all of a sudden. Uh, two different types of podcasts, brother. Uh, so we got to bring the thunder. We're live on Facebook. I guarantee you, Dennis will be watching this. But Mark, on this podcast, what I like to do is I let my guests kind of introduce themselves where they are, where they want to start their story, and then we'll kind of go from there. Cool. My name's Mark. England. Uh, I'm currently up at Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia. Uh, broadcasting our, our pirate signal for the for the enlisted community. Uh, I'm a word word geek, language geek, as I was introduced on TEDx uh, RVA, which that, that actually happened as a I thought it was a joke from me. Because they're like, hey, we don't want to introduce you as a co-founder. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, they go, what, how do you want to be? And I was conversing with one of my friends who's part of the, the TEDx RVA crew. Shout out to Leah Freemail. And she goes, um, well, how do you want to be introduced? And it was just a real fast reply, language geek, two words. And that's how they introduced me. And it's that's accurate because it is. It's what I've been doing for the past 14 years professionally. Full time, researching, coaching, presenting, on the power of words. Talk a lot about abracadabra, folks, on almost so, every podcast. For so good I, reason. I, I want to. I'm going to. I'm going to equate something because I just interviewed Chase. So I want to. Awesome. I want to. Yes, amazing dude. We God, we connect He's so well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to do a boot camp out. And the East Coast, I'm super excited. Um, yeah. But there's a there's a real estate group, and, and you, you'll get where I'm going with this. There's a real estate group called the Jake and Gino Community. It's the number one community for teaching people multifamily. My buddy runs it. I know all the people that are in it. Some are my coaching clients. But when I bring them on a podcast and they start saying words, I don't even need to know that they're in the community. I go, you are in the Jake and Gino Community. And they're like, how do you know that? And I'm like, because there's certain little words that tip me off that are taglines for how they teach and the mindset and stuff. The same thing with you and Chase and the guys I met in Austin. There's little words, there's little actions that are almost like, for lack of a better word, a beacon for the direction that the group is teaching that you can spot. Do you notice that? That that kind of in the community sense maybe like-minded, maybe like words, kind of, you can kind of spot those things out. There's, yes, there's vernacular. There's, um, there's, there's, there's autocorrect vernacular. Okay. So, uh, you know, if I'm texting one of the coaches or making a post on Instagram uh, or, or my business partner, and I include a soft talk keyword, uh, I, 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 I guess we could make that happen. Okay. I'll put an asterisk next to the word guess and the word could. So first and foremost, I know I'm using soft talk because there's a time and a place for soft talk. You know, maybe we're, maybe we will go out to dinner tomorrow night. I'll let you know today by three. Okay. Yeah. So there's that. And then it's, 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 it's a little robotic. It's also funny. It's very endearing. You know, somebody, uses a negation, you know, I'm not going to do that again. Negation acknowledged, you know, using can'ts and don'ts and stuff. And it's really, a, it's, it's, it's a way of us demonstrating we're paying attention to what's coming out of our mouth. Okay. And so there's these, there's these through lines, these, these, this universal vernacular, so to speak. And then there's a ton of freedom in it as well in the, in the community to describe all the, the same thing of what, you know, we're all studying and experiencing. 
which is the power and the potency of our language. Um, I have a particular style of describing it, uh, talking about story, talking about the, the, the power of our words. Um, and then our coaches have, you know, they, if they do it enough, I tell them this from the onset, very shortly into level one certification, you got to do enough of this till your own style comes through. You got to, you got to, you got to describe this stuff till, uh, so your own way of essentially sharing your gospel about the power of our language. So, so you own it and it becomes authentic. That's what's cool. And it's, we talk about it as jujitsu, you know? Yeah. yeah. This, this stuff is jujitsu. So what's really interesting, right? True story. And I didn't even know, like I literally met you like four weeks ago. So I didn't even know this was a thing like this language stuff, but me personally, maybe I lived in victimhood for so long. I could spot this thing out in the crowd, these words, right? Mm-hmm. These little words, dude, true story. I was at, a mastermind in Arizona with a bunch of wholesalers and this guy, (laughs) there was like a big group of people and this guy like said something. And I was like, dude, no. And I just like stopped. And I was like, dude, nope. Like that word. And it's like, maybe I was a bartender for 20 years so I could hear things through the chaos, but it's somewhat those words speak out to me. And in, in, in my own experience, I read a book, uh, a coach sent to me, changed my life. I bought 60 copies of this book for all my coaching clients. It's called What You Say When You Talk to Yourself. Got it. And it's basically a book of reprogramming the subconscious mind. And when you come from uh, meth addiction and alcoholism and not being good enough or not, you know, to say I have to rebuild my mind about seven times in my life would be an understatement. There are many, as I would call it, ports in the storm in my life where I'm having these 2 a.m., 3 a.m. conversations with myself, Gary V in my ear, you know, rebuilding, reading. And, 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 and it really is this word, this, this, the, the, the internal language between human beings, as I see in my coaching clients, is almost pretty scary that people talk to themselves this way. I mean, it is like, Cause you would never talk to somebody else the way you talk. You wouldn't to talk to a dog like that. So what, how do they start? How do they, how do they even begin? Because I think that that alone changing the internal dialogue between the way I felt and what I said was the single greatest reason. And I barely, t- I don't talk about it enough. I think that was what started the genesis of the change for me. Yeah, that's, that's a big part of where the rubber meets the road. And, and was, was that a question? Austin, what do they, what do they do? Where do they start? Where do you even start? Because, because, because my, my, especially after coaching enough adults, I really believe that we all know what we should do. (laughs) I think so. So the question is, is where do you even start? And I call it the stick and the spoke. Sometimes you got to stick the, 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 in the spoke of the bicycle and you have to get a little road rash in order to, in order to start change. A couple, a couple places, uh, to begin come to mind. Um, if you want to have an experience of a different experience about your words, about your language, and when I say language, I mean, internal dialogue, external dialogue, language, what we think, what we say, what we write, slow down your rate of speech by 20%. And have one slow conversation with somebody. Ten minute conversation. Fifteen minute conversation with somebody. Just slow the damn thing down. And there's a real good chance you're going to like what happens. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to breathe better. And if you're breathing better, you're feeling better. And if you're feeling better, you're more present. And if you're present, you're breathing, then you're listening. And if you're present, you're breathing, and you're listening, then the conversation takes on a natural flow. You know, you, you, people, a lot of people talk about, you know, someone being a good conversationalist. There's a real good chance that they're also a really good breather, a really good listener. We just talked about this a second ago. Somebody, uh, uh, I believe we did, you know, somebody says, I've got all this 
you know, social anxiety. I'm really socially anxious. 95% chance, and that's low, you're holding your breath. (laughs) Breathe. Now breathe well while you're speaking, just a pinch slower, and watch what happens. You're going to get a, a, a tremendous amount more of command of your words, as in you're going to be able to feel your words differently. You're also going to have the mental real estate to pay attention to what words are better to use in conversation and what words are uh, uh you know, derail the whole thing. Your timing is going to go way up. World-class conversationalists, they have a timing. They've got a rhythm. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, fine, if you're having a monologue, then it's all about you. If you're having a dialogue, then that means you're dancing with somebody. Okay? Be a good dance partner. That's one thing to do. Let's say you're haunted by <laughs> echoes of the past. You know, things people have said to you. Your stuff your parents said to you, you know, over and over throughout your childhood. Guess what? You're going to keep hearing that shit in your head until you do something about it. And the easiest way to do something about it, say it's going to be easy in one sense. It's, 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 let me, let me make a, (laughs) it's completely easy writing it down in the short term, it might sting a little bit than living with it for another two or three decades. Write those sentences down. Write them down. I dare you. The pen might feel like it's 800 pounds, so what? You'll live. Take out a piece of paper and write down the things that people have said to you that keep ping-ponging around in your head, that keep you in that stress state and your butthole's all puckered, and it keeps you focusing on the past in a certain way, also known as the victim mentality. Get that stuff on paper because guess what? Those are spells, folks. Those are spells. The definition of a spell, Webster's, not mine, a word or a combination of words of great influence. And, you know, you'll never amount to anything. That's a combination of words of great influence. Sometimes someone only has to hear that once. Somebody says it externally once. It goes in and it sets up residence. And then you might hear that thing. 500 times in your head over the period of your life, maybe 5,000, you know, depend on how, depending on how strongly it influenced you or the strength of the emotional response you had when the person said it, get it on paper because now it's out of your head and it's on paper. You've got some distance and you can start the process of breaking those constrictive spells. That That was a rant. That was great. Um, I uh, I'm I'm going to be careful with my words here because I don't want to discount anybody's struggles. Okay, seeing addiction, coach it, work on it. I I I said what it happened, and I still believe it. Um, when when COVID happened, and we had to be at home, um, I think that what became very clear to me was the true addiction in America is not gambling. It's not porn. It's not drugs. It's not alcohol. It's work. And people are very comfortable with distracting themselves from those things. And they had to face their kids. They had to face their spouse. They had to be there. Um, And the reason is, which I think is the worst addiction than anything on this planet. It's my specialty because I lived it for 20 years is victimhood. I think victimhood is the scariest thing to, to go after. And I think a lot of coaches shy away from it because it is hard. I call it bunker mentality times 20. And the only reason why I can see it and spot it is because I lived it for 20 years and you truly have to saddle up next to somebody and you have to say, I understand, but that's not going to get you where you need to go. And it's this, Not to sound over dramatic, but it's a, it's a, it's a robbery of life. I mean, it's a robbery of dreams, of hopes, of being stuck in neutral. I'm right there with you, buddy. It's the addiction. It's the addiction, and it's the one that's closest to home. 
you know, what's more seductive than our own voice in our own head? Hmm. What's that quote? Like keep your keep your keep your enemies closer and or what is that what's that quote like keep, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Well, there you go. That's victimhood. No, yeah. because what did it for me uh, to each their own, but what did it to me is having a person that I respect look me right in the fucking face and said, "Hey, dude, for a year." I've heard you blame everybody else. When the fuck are you going to take full ownership of where you are standing as it sits right here today? When are you going to own any part of this fucking story? And it was that day that in that time frame that I happened to be real, reading Jocko Willick's book, Extreme Ownership mm. as well, too. And so I decided that moving forward, I would own every part of my story. I would bring it from the dark into the light. I would shine the spotlights on it and I would no longer allow it to be a part of who I was or own me. And it's awkward. You have nobody to answer to, but yourself. And so anytime my employees or anybody around me doesn't get what they need or something doesn't end up the way that I wanted it to ultimately I tell myself, but it's on you. And as much as it is a, a responsibility, it's also a freeing way to live your life because then nobody else controls how you move it's the best of news it's the worst of news sweet <laughs> I'm creating my reality fuck I'm creating my reality <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's it's, not so true. God it's damn. so true. It's so true. All right. All at the same time. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> so, if, but if, but on the back of that, and maybe I just have a different mindset, if that's the case, well, then it's all up to me. And so there's a yeah. freedom and there's an excitement in that slash pure responsibility too. Yeah. It's so true. Everybody, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming. Nobody's going to come change your thoughts in your head for you. Okay. That's, that's, that right there is the real inside job. And back to the power of the pen, writing things down. You got some stories that have been haunting you for God knows how long. Get them on paper. Okay. Get them on paper. Specifically, title a specific event, the divorce, the abuse, the dog attack, the car accident, the bullying, the whatever. Specific memory, title it, write it out conversationally, which is very different about than journaling about how you feel about the thing that happened back then. And get it out of your head. Get it on paper. Watch what happens. It'll go from seemingly infinite and there's the worst part. No, what do I do with that? To now it's got a beginning word and an end word and got some distance between my eyeballs and you'll you'll it, you'll feel it, it, you'll be glad it's out some part of you will go whew, glad that's out of me mm-hmm. okay and then you know you can keep going if you want with it and that right there is something it's a definite something and everybody can do it it's free might sting a little bit but so what It's one of the I've been I've been diving into Naval Naraki a lot lately. And who's I just that? finished. He's an angel investor who's invested in like 70 companies, but he wrote a book uh about just his life and he's a real deep thinker. And you know, he said he said this quote is somebody else might have said it. He said, you know, easy choices, hard life, hard choices, easy life. You know, and his definition is there's no good or bad. There's it's, it's, it's merely whatever you decide to perceive it as. And one of the things that I, there's two things that I work on. Well, there's three things that I work on for 
very aggressively for the last two years. Um, one is expectations. The other is attachment. And the third one is emotional stability. I feel like if I can wrangle in those and, and form those, then I can, then I can operate in a space to just be myself. Mm. And it's that attachment thing that I think is the hardest thing because we're, we're so, especially in who I coach, right? High performers, real estate, business people, there's so much attachment to the outcome that they lose sight of where they exist today. And it's, it's something that Anthony said that I will post as soon as we get off this, because it's still blowing my mind out of the back of my body is the problem is not the news on TV. It's that your lack of seeing that there's good news available all around you. It's good news all around us. Yeah. That, that's my quote of the day so far. It's very strong. And so how do we, as, how do we, as humans, how do we remove ourselves from expectations and attachment? Breathe better. Breathe better. Breath, breath trapped in the chest, you're attached. Mm-hmm. Get your breath low and slow. You're demonstrating a, a significantly better degree of non-attachment than if you're if you're if you're breathing in your chest. Chest breathing, expectation. Chest breathing, short fuse. Chest breathing, poor listening. Chest breathing, myopic focus on something. Chest breathing, stiffness. Okay? Chest breathing, you're not flowing. Abdominal breathing, better listening. Uh, uh, Abdominal breathing, distance and perspective. Abdominal breathing, access to your creative faculties. Abdominal breathing, you're, 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 you're centered. Abdominal breathing, you're way more in the flow. Abdominal breathing, you can, you've got choices because you can see options. You could, most people are living there. It sucks. I know. I used to do it. I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to hang, we're going to hang a hard right. Do it. And we're going to, just for pure fascination, um, as a, as a, as a, I, mainly I'm asking for myself as a, as a, as a teacher of other people and as a facilitator of ideas, right? I came up with a motto with myself the other day. I'm nothing more than a broker of ideas and people. And as a, as a teacher, there's a lot of want to, especially when I started out coaching in the, in the beginning, there's a lot of want to, to fix. Right. And I had Chase bring it to my attention. That, that is somewhat of a victim mentality still. Let me be the savior. Let me, mm-hmm. let me ride in on the horse. And I over, over hard, uh, <laughs> hard coaching and, and basically coaching my own students and, and my clients. How do you remove yourself? Um, where I see a lot of the problems is, partners, maybe it's part of the reason I got divorced, trying to be the cheerleader to, to their significant other or trying to be the cheerleader to their brother or something like that. How do you become a more of a guide and not a, not a poker, as I would call it? It's a process. You know, get comfortable with people being better at shit than you are. Gosh. Oh, that's it right there. Yeah. You know, like it, it, when someone's more equipped to lead, get out the fucking way. You know, be glad about it. Trust me. Leadership comes up from time to time in conversations and. Okay, fine. I mean, I, my business partner and I are, are leading in one sense. And we also do it reluctantly. Like I think people that le- they, they lead because they want to lead because they they choose to lead, be leaders. I think they got screws loose. They haven't thought it through. You know, a, a lot of times the, the dominance hierarchy will select the, the best person to lead the thing. And, you know, are you, 
am I, am, am I attached to, what am I more attached to a good outcome or me leading, you know, and trust me that white knuckle grip is a, is, is a, is a real thing. Um, there's a lot to that, you know, so, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Austin the, the uh, night or the morning after the, the workshop that we met uh, in, in person I was on uh, Brittany Wilde's podcast and she wanted to talk about community building and fine. And, the, and it's, I, I can just now, excuse me, talk about it because we do have a community and we have built it and um, it's, it's, it's the, the foundation is, is laid what we where it goes from here. Great. And we've got a foundation. It's like, it's like talking to someone about laying a foundation of a house. Is there a foundation to the house there? Yeah, if there is, then fine. Let's talk about it. Um, one of the things that came out of my mouth and it was the first time I'd ever talked about it on a podcast. Cause this is, this is not, this is not something in my wheelhouse. We're learning as we go. And I said, uh, you know, let people help you. You know, let people help you. There's going to be people that are going to want to help you do this thing, move this thing forward, be a part of it. There are people that are going to have better ideas than you. Okay, there are uh, um, there are there are people that are going to elaborate on your ideas and make them better. Okay, they're going to if if and if you're teaching, if you're really doing it right, your students will eclipse you. Okay, they must. Otherwise, you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you. There, I fucking said it. And and all those things, they're great. It's a it, it, there's think about them, contemplate them. And the process of relaxing into making those things realities, making them you know, the front burner stuff for your unconscious competencies, that takes a while. And a lot of that stuff is uncomfortable. Okay. Cause I have been paranoid at times about where the community goes or, or people using the system the right way. I'm like, dude, you're fucking your head. Stop, stop this thing. You're, you, this thing will eclipse you if you do it right. So stay in that position, um, and and know that that's that's the highest gift that you can give to this to this community um, is to is to deliver the payload and get out of the way. And when the thing's done with you, it's done with you. This thing, it's like Hollywood or the fight game. You're never done with the fight game. The fight game's done with you when it's done with you. And yeah, fine, I've got a, a goal to do this work for 50 years. And at some point in time, it becomes evident that this community would be better off without me for whatever reason, or it's just that the thing's over for the right reason, um, or I'm done for the right reason, then I walk. Okay? I walk. So, um, close my eyes a couple times during that, because the, the power of this, that, this, typical moment in this conversation it means it means everything to me because that's what i'm currently building within my businesses is my superpower is putting people in places and letting them shine in their true mm. gifts in, in my i'm sorry i'm almost getting emotional in my in my 20s i felt the need for a lot of credit and um, I read a book about behavioral investing, and he said, your, your need for credit will be straightly tied to your level of compensation. Meaning the more credit you need, the less money you'll make. The less credit you need, the more your, your community will flourish. It's Taoist. It's genius. It's true. When, when, people, when people praise me, right, my coaching clients, whatever you want to call it, man thank you you know this is what you did i said it's not me this is bigger than me I had a conversation after i met you 
we went to Colorado. I had a conversation with my mom. My mom is very intuitive. Let's just say my mom always knew I'd wind up just right here. <laughs> Got it. She's just waiting for me to get out of my own fucking way. Uh, mm-hmm. What she said to me last night, you're finally getting out of your own way. Um, I said, you know, I want to dive into these, these, these thoughts, these premonitions, these, these things that happen in my coaching session that I can't explain. And she was like, baby, don't do that. She said, I just let it be what it'll be. And so I have this new motto. It's called surrender, breathe, surrender, breathe. Because every time that I've tried to force something, every time I've tried to put something in a box, I get beat up. I lose money. I get hurt. Every time I've allowed the outcome to be out of my control and I focused on my daily habits and how I can show up for people, it's beautiful. And this this juggernaut that I'm building, these these coaching people that I'm coaching that are going to be coaches underneath me is going to get way bigger than me. And I know that. But it 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 allows it, it, it requires me to step out of the way of my own gift and just let it be what it'll be. And that's very hard for, for high achievers to, to understand that. And you just explained it because I'm sure you feel the same way. That's why this, this is so interesting that we went here because it's, I'm, as you're saying that I'm, I already see it like down the road. I've, I've learned to think that way and it's sunk into a good degree and it's got a little bit more to go. And a lot of it, um, a lot of it comes down to me getting very clear about how can I fuck this up? <laughs> Let me count the ways. You know, you need to get clear about how you can fuck things up, folks, because you can fuck things up. Mm-hmm. And when that when when that gets clear, do do what you need to do. Like you said earlier, people know what they need to do. Do what you need to do. We, I, I truly believe this, and, and this is the way I operate. Not everybody has to operate this way. Believe that life is in seasons. I believe that in within a year, I think there are different seasons that I operate in a business or in my podcast. And I think there's time to go and there's time to stop. There's time to reflect. There's time to move quick. And I think that my life has too many chapters to be written to be defined by a 10-year act or a five-year act because what I classify it as, right, is you think I'm coaching you. Like I'm coaching you, the client. No, 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 no. (laughs) I'm coaching your son, who's going to affect that person, who's going to affect that person. It's a ripple effect of impact. And if we as a society would get out of our own fucking way, remove your fucking stupid ego and go out and make somebody smile every day and actually ask that person how they're doing and actually give a shit about what's going on in other people's life, then we would become a society of people that care about one another instead of stepping over each other's throats to get somewhere they think they need to be off of a triggered emotion from a childhood trauma. There's a lot of continuity there. (laughs) Pay attention to what he just said, folks. As I tell my clients, you're building the house off of something that happened to you 20 years ago, but then again, predicated by wanting to make somebody outside of you happy. And then when you put the ladder up on the house, you realize that it's the wrong house. It's a legit analogy. We got a farm in the middle of, state of Virginia and one of our next door neighbors it's a hunt club Jerry Nixon owns the hunt club 
and he is a mat grandmaster deer hunter. Been doing it his whole life. And I'll, you know, he'll come over from time to time and start talking about something. Sometimes it's deer hunting. This, this one time. He was going off on the these particulars and this this guy's a real country boy. He goes, There's a lot of shit to this shit. <laughs> And I'm still quoting him. That was a few years ago. There's a lot of shit to this shit, folks. Coaching, there's a lot of shit to this shit. And, you know, shout out to David Wolf. Do what you love. Do what you love. Go on an adventure. I'm, I'm rehashing the podcast that we literally just got yeah, off. No, 100%. And literally, I am, and I, just, just and I am one too. big thing. Yeah, and I am, I am too. It's interesting, right? And I think your mind works. The, the same way mine does. I, I like a good challenge. I like that. Uh, tell me I can't, you know, and all that stuff. But what's interesting about coaching, right. Is I find it. Nothing I do. I could raise a hundred million dollars and buy 17 companies. And it wouldn't challenge me the same way as boxing with another human. And when I mean that it's mental boxing, it's, it's don't, don't step there. Cause that's too, that's too sensitive. Okay. 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 Well, hold on. Back up, back up, back up. We're going to save that one for three weeks from now. When I've, when I've come around your flank and I've cleaned off this and then I'm going to hit you with that right when I need to. And my friend says something about me that I thought was very (laughs) poignant. She goes, you have this amazing ability of being delicate as a flower and knocking my two front teeth out. Like I've never seen before. There is a yin and yang, and I and I and I find your style to be one to allow something that I want to get to. And you said something to me. You said something at workshop that has stuck with me since. Be comfortable enough as a coach to lay out the framework and then sit back and take a breath and wait for them to answer instead of you feeling the need to step on top of the words that you just created. It's true. Master coaches own silence. Yeah. Anybody who's listening to this, who's a coach, you gotta own the silence. How do you know you're owning it? You're comfortable in it. 10 seconds on a coaching call. It's like 10 <laughs> seconds on a podcast. You know, it feels like a year. It's not. Make sure you're breathing. Get it low. Get it slow. Watch what happens. Good things happen like that. Do you, do you remember? Uh, do you remember? You, you remember Goodwill Hunting? Yeah, good move. Robin Williams. He says, "I can't talk first. and he just sits there, dude. I, that today in this society, whew. dude. We got mach- j- the 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 we. If we want to get all big, Lebowski, the Royal. We all like the General. We got machine gun mouth, man. Just words, rapid fire words. Look uh, back to the news. Look at the way the news is laid out. You know, you got you. Here's we're bringing somebody on who could give a, a weekend workshop about something, and you got 45 seconds to yell at somebody who's got an opposing opinion, who's also a doctor. Yeah, doctorate. It's 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 weird. It's weird. There, I said that too. So I have a weird question for you because this could go nine different ways. Shoot. What is your hope for people? Seriously. That they breathe better. Super simple. Like that's, um, you know, we got a variety of ways to describe the end goal for this. And I mean, we, I mean, my business partner. And here's mine is to unlock the breathing of humanity. If you're going to do that, you got to you got to re-engineer the language. Most people's language keeps them in a stress state, and children, children, they 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 pattern, they mirror, and then replicate their parents' breathing pattern. It very rarely does do it. Does a child grow up in a high stress environment and come out all cool, chill, and you know? 
And like, it, wh why is that? Okay, how simple can we make the answer? Everybody's holding their breath and tense and tight, and the child, <sighs> due to entrainment, does the same thing and then takes that out and replicates that out in their life. History does not repeat itself. It rhymes. And, um, you know, that takes an act of Congress to change that. Okay. And it's only going to ever, and even still, that's never, that will never happen from an outside force implementing itself on the person. The person has to choose to unravel all those knots. And sometimes there's a lot of them, but, uh, yeah, the we're known as the language people. We might as well be known as the language and the breathing people. Talk about it all the time. We want to get our breath low and slow, uh, and that 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 changes that changes enough to where the next generation will take that and and expand upon the goodness of it. The the and 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 cool things will happen. We will we'll change genetically. You know, yeah. look up look up epigenetics. Look up epigenetics or gene expression. If you don't mind on my own podcast, I'm going to answer that same question because I feel up, I buddy. feel I, f I feel drawn to it. <sighs> my hope is that is that you actually take five seconds to think about what the fuck you want. Not what your dad wants, not what you were conditioned to think, not what you think society wants. If we were a society where people actually did what they wanted to do, if they controlled their time, if they controlled their thoughts, imagine the joy that would be predicating around in society. If we were had individual thoughts, if we had freedom to be curious, and you don't have to go through all the turmoil and the drug addictions and the homelessness and the divorce and the laid off and the losing money. And that's why I do this shit. And that's why I work so hard at it, because I want you to understand that it's not needed. You don't need to hit the wall doing 120. You can create a space where it doesn't matter the dollar amount, but it's made for you. But it takes you having to get out of your own fucking way and to admit that there's a problem and start changing today. Not tomorrow, not six months from now, today. All you motherfuckers know exactly what you should be doing, but you're not doing it. And you're given excuse after excuse after excuse, and it's not good enough. It doesn't work. We know that anybody that's enlightened knows that you're full of shit. And I'll call you out on it any fucking day of the week because I'm the bullshit detector. Just like he hears it in your words, I hear it in your eyes. I see it in your eyes. I see it in the way that you move. And so we're on here trying to share a different way. And if you take anything away from this conversation, I hope that you would question some things. I hope that you would get investigated, dig into your life and make the switch. It's really hard to change and change the direction of the Titanic. But once that bitch gets moved, she keeps on chugging along. Very well said. And then we're going to do my favorite word before we get out of here. What does uh, abracadabra mean? And what does it mean to your business? Abracad Thank you. Abracadabra, folks. Does it mean magic? Or does it mean something more than magic? Does it mean rabbits coming out of hats? Or does it mean something more than rabbits coming out of hats? Is it, is it, is it only in a Steve Miller band song? Or is it more than that? It's more than that. Abracadabra 
is Aramaic, and it translates to with my word I create or with my word I influence. Look it up. The teachers of the day. This is my business card, by the way. It's a wooden wooden coin with... <laughs> How fun is that? It's fun. Uh, the metaphysicians of the day, they would triangulate it, wear it around their neck to remind them of the power and the mechanism of the spoken word. And also to dispel, which means to cast out negativity. Spells, dispel, you know, abracadabra, with my word I create. Spells, the definition of a spell, a word or a combination of words of great influence. Magic, the definition of magic, the ability to apparently alter the course of events using supernatural forces. It's not the ability to do it. It's the apparent ability to do it. One man's magic is another man's technology. Supernatural is a null word. Robert N. Heinlein, stranger in a strange land, stranger in a strange land. And, and then the last one, any technology that is far enough from, uh, uh, I'm fucking this up. Any, any technology that is advanced enough, there it is 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 you can't differentiate it from magic. I mean think about it. And then the word, look at the word. Technology. Technique. Technology. Technical knowledge. The technical knowledge. D- increase your technical knowledge. Your the the your your strategic knowledge of how to use your words to stay focused on the things that are important to you, build yourself up in your imagination, build up your confidence, breathe well, lock that thing in place, and go after what you want because this is not the trial run. Everybody listen to this thing. You're you're toast. You're going to die. We're all walking around like we're not going to die. No, you're going to die. Okay. Nobody's getting out of here alive. Most people's language tricks them into being spectators, innocent bystanders in their own story. One of my favorite quotes, I'd rather be trampled in the stadium than be a spectator in the stands. Think about that. I like that. Get get in the arena, (laughs) folks. uh, Whatever. hmm, I like that one a lot. Whatever, whatever your arena is, guys, get the fuck in it. Uh, so if people want to find out more about what you got going on, you got a great course, you're coaching coaches, how would they do that? Instagram, that's a spot. Mark England 2057. Go over there, poke around, send me a message, say hello. I'm friendly. I answer. <laughs> you might get a voice message back. Don't be, don't be shy. Get a voice message. Don't be shy, people. He won't bite. <laughs> it's something completely random. I got this next to my desk. I just got this in the other day. What is that? 10 ounce bar of silver. Oh my goodness. Get yourself some pirate money, folks. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's that's for a separate conversation. Uh, guys, if you like this episode, make sure you send it out to your friends. Hope you got some value from this and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on -on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.